Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to my class. Uh, it is called Conceptual Framework and Accounting Standards class. By the way, my name is Marky. I am a certified public accountant and I'm also a professor teaching auditing, accounting, and taxation. Our topic for today is about IAS 7 Statement of Cash Flows. We normally prepare cash flow statement because it is an integral part of the financial statement. Also, it is very obligatory to prepare a cash flow statement because there are government regulatory bodies who require cash flow statement as part of the audited financial statement. So one example, is uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Bureau of Internal Revenue on where they um, <clears throat> mandate uh, the submission of cash flow statement as part of the complete set of the financial statement. Also, it is prepared for a certain period of time, say one accounting period starting from January 1, 20XA up to December 31, 20XA. So that is just an example because there are other companies uh, that are being reported their financial statements on a fiscal period so this that does not necessarily mean it's ending december 31 but any other month uh, of the year cash flow statement is the only statement that ignores the accrual assumption so unlike income statement and balance sheet which follows the accrual concept or accrual assumption of cash flow statement uh, it deviates from the accrual assumption because it follows the cash basis concept of reporting. There are uses of cash flow statements. So one use is that it shows the ability of the entity to generate cash. So cash flow statement, uh, it shows the cash receipts and cash payments of an entity during the period. But uh, as a stakeholder, we, we are looking at the cash flow statement because we want to see where does the cash coming from? Normally, an entity uh, generates cash through sale of services or sale of goods. Uh, there are cases that a uh, company generates cash through uh, its investing activities, such as uh, disposal of uh, property, plant, and equipment. There are also cases when a cash uh, is being generated through issuance of uh, shares of stocks or proceeds from bank borrowings. Uh, IAS 1 presentation of financial statements are uh, required some identification marks in order to prepare cash flow statements. So one identification mark is that we should name include the name of the reporting entity. So this is similar to income statement and balance sheet where we report the name of the reporting entity uh, upon presenting uh, this financial statements. So it must clearly state if uh, we are reporting under a group of financial statement or it's just a separate financial statement which has a cash flow statement on it. It must also contain the title of the report because uh, it, there is a complete set of financial statements. So we have the statement of financial position, which is the balance sheet, statement of comprehensive income, which is previously the income statement, and then cash flow statement, and then we have statement of changes in equity, and then we have the notes to, all, to the financial statement. It must also contain the date or reporting period because we are we are following the time period assumption and we must present uh, the specific uh, covered period for such report uh, we must also show the reporting currency and rounding used because under the philippine setting we are presenting it in philippine peso and there are big companies which uh, presents a huge amount of figures in which they need to reduce the amounts through rounding off. So it's either through hundreds, thousands, or even millions. Uh, under IAS 7, uh, the statement of cash flows is being designed to provide information about the change in an entity's 
cash and cash equivalent uh, transaction. So it shows the movement between these two items, the cash and cash equivalent. So we have two classification, the cash and the cash equivalents. So this two identification or classification, we need to get to know more in this uh, deeper. So normally cash, uh, it is composed of cash and hand and demand deposit. The cash and hand is simply a cash which is readily available for disbursements or using the operation. So one examples are petty cash fund, payroll fund, change fund, interest fund. So these are coins and currencies that are on hand. While demand deposits are uh, these are cash in bank that are withdrawable on demand without any uh, incurrence of penalties or surcharges from the bank. So examples of demand deposits are savings deposits, checking accounts, and current deposits. Cash equivalents, on the other hand, uh, these are short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to a known amount of cash and which are subject to an insignificant risk of change in value. So as per um, IES 7, paragraph 7, uh, this provides that an investment normally qualifies as a cash equivalent only when it has a short maturity of uh, three months or less from the date of acquisition. So examples of it are three months of BSP treasury bills, three months time deposits, or money market instruments purchased three months before the maturity date. So sample problem, uh, we need to identify the following financial instruments. Is it cash? Is it cash equivalent or any other specific account? So these are the examples. ABC Corporation is the following financial instrument listed below. First one is coins and currencies. So we need to identify if it's a cash, cash equivalent or any other account. So coins and currencies is a cash because it is uh, generally a cash on hand. Time deposit. Time deposit, if there is no uh, disclosure on the number of months before it became due, it qualifies automatically as a cash equivalent. Number three, six months time deposit. So since there is a six months term on the time deposit and it does not qualify with the cash equivalent because cash equivalent normally has a three month rule so this uh, line item fall under short term investment checking account qualifies as a cash because it is a cash in bank account equity trading securities normally uh, equity securities if it is held for trading it does not qualify as a cash it does not also qualify as a cash equivalent but rather a short-term investment. Money orders are cash because these are uh, money orders we have from post offices. Money market placements, uh, if the problem is silent and this fall as a cash equivalent. BSP treasury bills purchased three months before maturity. So it qualifies as a cash equivalent because it is being purchased three months before maturity date. Savings deposit, it qualifies as a cash because it is a cash in bank. Bond sinking fund is a type of fund which has uh, related to a bond sinking project. So the bond sinking project which uh, is a long term. So the bond sinking fund is other non-current financial assets. 11. Last one. Purchase redeemable preference shares three months before maturity. Normally, shares uh, are not qualified as cash or cash equivalent because they don't have maturity value. However, if a preference shares is a redeemable preference share and uh, it is being purchased three months before its redeemable date, 
and then it qualifies as a cash equivalent. Cash flow sources. Normally, there are three sources or activities for a cash uh, to be generated. It came from uh, operating activities, uh, investing activities, and financing activities. Operating activities are cash flows derived primarily in the principal revenue operating activities of the entity. So in other words, operating activities generally result from transactions and other events that enter into the termination of net income or loss. So examples of it are sale of goods and rendering of services because this is within the principal revenue producing activities of the entity. We also have receipts from royalties, rentals, fees, commissions, and other revenues. Payments to suppliers and employees. So any payments we made to trade creditors, trade suppliers, and employees, it automatically qualify as an operating activities because such payments are within the operating cycle of the firm. Payments for admin and other expenses. We also have uh, payments and refunds for income taxes, but as you can see, it has exemptions because if income taxes paid is uh, directly related to either investing activity or financing activity, then we must present the income taxes paid in investing activity or financing activity. For the investing activity, uh, these are activities or cash flows derived from acquisition and disposal of long-term assets and other investments not included in cash equivalent. So, example of these investing activities are acquisition or disposal of property, plant, and equipment, as well as intangibles. We also have acquisition and disposal of equity or debt instruments, which is not held for trading. So, be careful on it. Uh, Sometimes, if equity or debt instruments are held for trading, then this qualifies as an operating activity and we should present it under operating activities. So only those uh, equity or debt instruments which are not held for trading are included as part of the investing activities. Also part of the investing activities are advances or loans to other funds parties. However, uh, if, uh, if the entity is a financial institution, these advances or loans to other parties are generally part of the operating activities because that activity is within the central revenue producing activities of that company. We also have futures, forwards, options, and swaps. So these are derivative activities on which um, normally part of the investing activities, but also be careful in this. If uh, these derivative activities are held for trading, then it must be presented as part of the operating activities. And uh, you should also keep in mind that derivative activities are also subject for hedging activities. Financing activities. So the financing activities are cash flows derived from equity capital and borrowings of the entity. So this activity normally increases or decreases the structure of the equity or capital borrowings of the entity. So one example is the receipts from share issuances. We also have acquisition of treasury shares. We also have debentures, loans, notes, bonds, mortgages, and other short-term or long-term borrowings. Then we also have finance lease or reduction of finance lease and any other finance costs related to finance lease. So normally cash flows uh, is a cash basis in preparation.